So I'm going to work through this equation on, or I'm sorry, I'm going to work through this worksheet on solving equations that involve exponential or logarithmic expressions. So let's just get right on to it. So solve the following equations, and this number one says 8 to the t is equal to negative 6 because it's exponential. I mean, the basic rule here is that if it involves an exponential, you got to use a logarithm. And if it involves a logarithm, you got to use an exponential to undo it. So this is an exponential because it's got a number in the base and a variable in the exponent. So I'm going to just take the natural log of both sides. Why natural log? Because um, that's usually what I use is natural log to undo to undo um, any exponential, um, unless there's an obvious other choice. And as soon as I take take the natural log of both sides, I realize that the natural log of negative six can't be done because remember, the domain of natural of any logarithm is um, greater than zero. So this is undo. This is uh, not possible. And then when I stop and look at this for a second, I realize that well, yeah, I can't raise eight to a power and get a negative number anyway. So that is no solution. Number two says 81 equals uh, 3 to the x. Now, a lot of us can do this in our head. You can see that it's just 3 to the fourth power equals 81, so x would have to be 4. Um, but you could use logarithms to solve that also. Number three um, is an exponential expression, or ex equation, I mean. Um, and so we want to isolate the expo exponential part and then take the log of both sides. So in this case, I subtract 15 from both sides and get negative 11 is equal to negative e to the x minus 8. Then divide both sides by negative 1, so I get 11 is equal to e to the x minus 8. Now I'm ready to take the log of both sides, and I'm going to take natural log once again. Now, in this case, natural log is an obvious choice because I have a base e over here, and we know that natural log and e to the undo each other. So then I'm left with... Um, the natural log of 11 is equal to just x minus 8. Um, and so then if we add 8 to both sides, we get 8 plus the natural log of 11 is equal to x. Okay. There's another one where I've got exponential and with some something added to the side, so I want to isolate the exponential part first, so I subtract 29 from both sides and I get 10 to the t plus 12 is equal to, subtract 29 from that and I get what, 45. Then I'm going to take, now in this case, I could take natural log, but in this case it makes more sense to take um, log base 10, because I have a base 10 here, and I can still log, do log base 10 on my calculator. So if I do log base 10 of both sides, I end up with t plus 12 It's not writing for some reason. t, base, t plus 12 is equal to log base 10 of 45. Subtract 12 from both sides and I get t is equal to log base 10 of 45 minus 12. Now, of course, we're, I've left these in exact, as an exact answer, but we could grab our calculator. Um, let me grab my calculator here and actually find out an approximation for these using decimals. So like in that number three, that's the natural log of 11. Um, plus 8. So this would be um, approximately 2.398. And likewise down here, if I take log base 10 of 45, oops, let's see, log base 10 of 45, and then I want to subtract 12 from that. I get 
t is approximately equal to negative 10 0.347. Okay. All right, so now with number five, finally get one that has logarithms on it. So remember, when you have a logarithms equation, the first thing you want to do is isolate the logarithm, which this one's already isolated, and then you raise both sides of the equation to a power or something. So since this is natural log, that means log base e, I'm going to make both sides the exponent of e. He's having problems writing for some reason. Sorry about that. Let me give it another go. So e to the natural log of x minus 1 is equal to e to the 3. So again, you make both sides of the equation an exponent of e. So now e to the ln cancel each other out, leaving an x minus 1. And e to the 3 is just a number. So I add 1 to both sides, and I get x is equal to e to the 3 plus 1 which is approximately equal to let's see e e to the 3 so we get approximately 21.086 All right, let's move on here. So here's another one. We got an e to the x equals 2 times e to the x minus 1. Now this one's a little bit tricky because we have two different exponentials um, and then plus a 2 in there or times a 2 in there. So the best we can do, I think, is get the exponentials on separate sides of the equation and then go ahead and take, in this case, the natural log of both sides. So I have the natural log of e to the x is equal to the natural log of 2 times e to the x minus 1. Now we have to be careful how we break this up. Natural log of e to the x, of course, is just x. And on this side, whenever I'm, if you remember the first log rule, when I'm taking the log of two things multiplied together, I can rewrite that as the natural log of the first one plus the natural log of the second one. And when I do that, now I can see that this is just a number, log base 2, I can get from a calculator. And this, the natural log and the e cancel each other out, so I'm left with an x minus 1. So then this one, when I go ready to solve it, I'm going to subtract x from both sides because now that I have the x's out of the exponent, I want to get them together. And I realize that I end up with nonsense because I have 0 equals ln2 minus 1, which is not true. So this is another one that has no solution. Okay, here's another one you can probably maybe do in your head because you know that 9 is 3 squared. So that would be like 3 to the 2x is equal to 3 to the x plus 3, which means... 2x has to be equal to x plus 3, which means x is equal to 3. That's a pretty fun one. Of course, you could take log base 3 of both sides on this one, and it would it'd be similar to what we just end up with. Okay, moving right along, number 8. Log's already by itself. Since it's the log base 10, I'm going to do 10 to the of both sides. And the log... 10 to the and log base 10 cancel each other out, leaving me with x plus 3. On this side, I have the square root of 10. And then I get x equals the square root of 10 minus 3. Okay, and then if we wanted to approximate that, of course, we would get um, square root of 10 minus 3. 1.62 or 0.162 and remember when you take solving the equation with logarithms in it you always have to check your answers to make sure they're not extraneous if i put a 0.162 in for x um, it does not make it positive or it makes it positive which then that means it's okay it's going to work okay number nine might need a little more room here so first of all, I notice that I have two logarithms. I don't really want to get them on, move one to the other side because then it's going to be a 
Um, it's easier if I just have one logarithm. But actually, I noticed that this can be turned into a number, can it? Log base 4 of 2. So I could rewrite that as 1 is equal to um, 4 to what power equals 2? That would be to the 1 half power. So this is just 1 equals 1 half plus log base 4 of 3 plus x. That's pretty sweet. So if I subtract 1 half from both sides, I get 1 half is equal to log base 4 of 3 plus x. Now I'm going to raise both sides to a power of 4. I mean, make both sides x1 or to 4. So that would be 4 to the 1 half is equal to 4 to the log base 4 of 3 plus x. Of course, 4 to the 1 half power is just 2. And 4 to the log base 4 cancel each other out. And I'm left with just 3 plus x. Subtract 3 from both sides, I get negative 1 is equal to x. Once again, if I plug a negative 1 in for x here, it's still positive on the inside, so that's a good solution. Make a little extra space here so I can fit everything in. Okay. So here's another one with double logs, but this one I can't just get rid of one of the logs because it's not a something I can do in my head. So um, I'm going to use the log rules. So whenever I have a log of something plus log of something, then I can combine those into one log and write it as log of um, t plus 3 times t is equal to 1. So, of course, that would be log of t squared plus 3t is equal to 1. So now I just have one logarithm, and I'm going to undo it by, since it's log base 10, I'm going to make both sides of the equation an exponent of 10. Of course, on this side, I just get 10. But over here, the log, the 10 to that and log base 10 cancel each other out. I'm left with a t squared plus 3t. And I realize that I have a um, quadratic. So let's go up here for a moment where there's some room. So I need to solve this. So I go t squared plus 3t minus 10 equals 0. And I think that's factorable t and t and 2 and 5 and plus and minus. So I end up with t equals 2 or t equals negative 5. And when I do, now since it started out with a logarithmic equation, I've got to check and make sure they're, they're not extraneous. If I plug a 2 in there and there, I'm still positive inside the log, which is good. If I st stick a negative 5 in for there, I end up being forced to take a log of negative 2 so that can't work. So that is an extraneous solution. This is the only one that works. Oops. Number 11, um, again, we have two logs, so we're going to combine them. It is log plus log. In this case, it's log base 2. So I'm going to go log base 2 of t plus 1 times t minus 1 is equal to 5. And since I have the logs, the log by itself, um, and it's log base 2, I'm going to make both sides of the equation a power of 2. And this is actually t squared minus 1, isn't it? 2 to the fifth. So now log 2 to the log base 2 cancel each other out, so I'm left with t squared minus 1. And 2 to the fifth, of course, is 32. So then I just got to solve that. If I add 1 to both sides, I get t squared is equal to 33, which means t is equal to the square root plus or minus the square root of 33. And I know that positive square root of 3, 33 is going to work, but negative won't because that will make the inside of logarithm negative. So I'll just erase that one, and I'll say over here, I'll erase both of them and say, that's a good answer t equals negative square root of 33 is not a good answer. Okay, one more here, similar. This is going to be negative 2 is equal to, now when I 
log base 2 minus log of 3 plus x. Since it's subtraction, that's the second log rule. So you could rewrite this as log of 2 over 3 plus x. And since it's log base 10, I'm going to raise both sides, make both sides the exponent of 10. So that would be 10 to the negative 2, which would be 1 over 100. And this is just going to be 2 over 3 plus x. So if I want to solve that, that would be 3 plus x is equal to 200, which means x is equal to 197. And that's going to work just fine in the original equation, so I'll block it. Number 13, it's a log minus a log, so I'll just go ahead and subtract them. Or I mean, I'll combine them, um, and it would be natural log of 4t over 3t is equal to 2. Um, but I noticed right away that the t's are going to cancel out there, which means I won't be able to solve for t. So this is going to be um, no solution because log of 4 thirds isn't equal to 2. Okay. Number 14, again, you can combine some logs here. This is going to be log base 2 of t plus 1 over t minus 1. So you go to 3. So raise both sides to a power of 2. So that would get rid of the log base 2. So that would be t plus 1 over t minus 1. And this would be 2 to the third power, which would be 8. So then I get t plus 1 is equal to 8t minus 8. That means that 7t is equal to 9, so t is equal to 9 sevenths. And again, if I plug that in there, they're both they'll be positive inside the logarithm, so I'm okay. Here we got logs on opposite sides, so I think my first move would be to go log base 3 of 4t and add log base 3 of 3t to it. Oops, sorry. And then there'd just be one over here. And of course, I can combine those to be log base 3 of 12t squared, because I'm just multiplying them. So then, since it's base 3, I'm going to raise both, make both sides a power of 3, which will leave me just 12t squared here. And that'll be 3 to the first, which would be 3. So then t squared is equal to 1 fourth, because 3 divided by 12 is 1 fourth. Square root both sides, and I get t is equal to plus or minus. Let me separate them just in case. t is equal to one half, or t is equal to negative one half. And when I plug in one half to both of these, I'm good. I plug negative one half, I'm not good. So that is an extraneous solution. Number 16. Get the logs together. So that's going to be log of 2 log base 2 of negative x plus log base 2 of 2 minus x is equal to 3. So that means log base 2 of negative 2x plus x squared is equal to 3 if I combine the logs. So then I'm going to get negative 2x plus x squared is equal to 2 to the third power, which is 8. So in other words, I'm making this and this a power of 2 to get rid of the log base 2. And so then I have another quadratic. So that's going to be what? x squared minus 2x minus 8 equals 0. And I've got to solve that. I think it'll factor, actually. So that would be x and x equals 0. So it'd be 2 and 4 and make that negative and that positive. So I end up with x equals negative 2 or x equals positive 4. And if I put a positive 4 in here, that will not work. So that's extraneous. If I put a negative 2 in there, that'll work just fine. Put a negative 2 in there, that'll work just fine. So x equals negative 2 is the answer. Okay, number 17 is kind of an oddball. It's different than all the others because it's got a... It's got an e to the 2x and an e to the x. So there's no way to combine those. So this is um, kind of a tricky one. If we rewrite it a little bit based on the 
exponent rules that we remember, you can see that this kind of takes on what we call the um, quadratic form. Um, so, and, and something to help you see this better is there's this thing called u substitution. You could say, let's let u equal e to the x for a moment. So then this would be u squared minus u minus 6 equals 0. And you can see that it's a quadratic equation now. So that will factor, I think, u and u. And 2 times 3 is 6. So if I put a negative there and a positive there. So that means u is equal to negative 2 or u is equal to positive 3 because of that and that. But of course, remember that u is e to the x. So then we find out that e to the x is equal to negative 2 which is impossible because I can't raise e to the power and get a negative number, so I cross that one out. Or e to the x is equal to 3, which means, and I, that is possible, so I can solve that. So I take natural log of both sides, and I get x is equal to the natural log of 3, which I can throw into the calculator and um, get an answer. And then finally, last but not least, here's a nice exponential equation. First, I want to isolate the exponent, so it's I'd uh, divide both sides by 3,000, and I would get 3 is equal to e to the 2x plus 1. And since e to the, I'm going to take the natural log of both sides, so I get the natural log of 3 is equal to, and the natural log of e to the 2x plus 1 is just 2x plus 1, because the natural log and e cancel each other out. So then I just got to solve this linear equation, so that would be natural log of 3 minus 1 is equal to 2x, which means natural log of 3 minus 1 divided by 2 is equal to x. And if we throw that into our handy dandy calculator, we get minus 1 divided by 2. I get x is approximately 0 0.049. And that's it. All right, hope this is helpful. Um, keep practicing.